Thank you, Doreen. As always, that was lovely. We appreciate your preludes and postludes. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Welcome to St. Stephen's in Sierra Vista, Arizona. I'm the Reverend Allison Cornell, and those of you joining us online, we're glad to have you with us as well. Um, a few announcements before we begin our worship this morning. We had a lovely time with Thanksgiving, and thank you for all who brought food and came to our big feast. We think we had probably somewhere between 35 and 40 people at, at any given time. Uh, and the food was delicious, and it was a wonderful time to be together, so we're very grateful for all the blessings that we were able to share on that day. Uh, so here we are, and it is now the start of Advent. This is Advent 1, so Happy New Year to you because it's the start of the new church year, uh, which means that we will be rotating in our lectionary to go to year A. So we will be reading mostly from Matthew in the Gospels uh, this year. So a heads up on that. And as we begin our Advent, if you did not already pick up one of these devotional booklets, you can also get them um for free as a download online, uh, and the link is in your announcements. Um, but this is what we'll be using for devotional reading during Advent. Each day has a little reflection. We ask that you pick up one of these. They're on the table right there by the door on the way out. Uh, if you haven't already done so, pick one up and, uh, and read through each day a devotional. And there's a, a space there to make notes uh, or comments about things. You can underline them. It's yours to keep. Um, and on Saturdays during Advent, we will meet in the parish hall at 9 o'clock. And anyone who'd like to share about what you're reading, uh, how it's touched you, what you think about it. We invite you to come at nine o'clock. We'll have coffee and donuts available and we'll sit and we'll talk about the weekly readings each week. So we started off with this Saturday and we'll continue for the next several Saturdays in Advent uh, leading up to Christmas. Not on Christmas Eve, but on Christmas, on uh, first through fourth Advent. So uh, do pick up one of those. I call that to your attention. Um, this coming Friday will be our first Friday of December, and we will be having our first Friday film night, and we're showing A Charlie Brown Christmas and The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Both of those cartoons um, are memorable for me. I grew up with them. Maybe you did too. And uh, they have messages about the theme that we're exploring in Advent, which is simplicity, how we can simplify things in our lives uh, that maybe get in the way of our spiritual growth and our, our, our spiritual attention even. So uh, we'll be looking at those two. And uh, I know that we've got uh, two carcasses from the turkey leftover, so there will be turkey bone soup that evening. So if you are fond, uh, if you're fond of turkey soup, that's what's going to be on offer for our movie night. Um, then on Saturday, Doreen is going to be doing her concert here at two o'clock. That's December the 3rd. Please invite your friends, your neighbors to come. She's going to do some of the Christmas classics as well as some of her own compositions. And uh, it'll be about a 50-minute concert. And uh, we're asking for a free will offering that will go to the Good Neighbor Alliance, which is our uh, homeless shelter here in Sierra Vista. And we will be doing it online streaming as well. So those of you that are out there and would like to hear it, we're going to make that available. And you can make donations at our website um, online. There's a place for you to do that. So please invite your friends and neighbors to come two o'clock just for an hour uh, and hear some really excellent music. Uh, and then there'll be a short reception afterwards in the parish hall when you can talk to Doreen about uh, her playing and, uh, and offer you know, your thoughts on it. I'm sure I know I will be effusive in my praise because I already know how she plays. I hear her uh, practicing during the week. It's fabulous. Um, so I do call that to your attention. Um, the following week, the 9th and 10th, I will be at a conference on evangelism in San Diego. Uh, the Saturday night service will continue with Dottie doing evening prayer that particular Saturday. Uh, I'll be back on Sunday. We will have our Sunday service, um, and we will uh, still have Dottie as preaching that day because I'll be gone the earlier part of that weekend. Um, so I do call that to your attention as well. And then Bruce has offered on the 18th, which would be a Sunday after 
after we finish worship here, instead of having our fellowship time here, um, go over to Bruce's house. We're going to have a Christmas party, and we invite you to wear red and green for the season uh, to be festive, and we will be putting out a sign-up sheet to bring uh, an appetizer or finger foods and bring your own beverage. Bruce doesn't want to have to guess if you're a Coke or a Pepsi person or a coffee or a tea person, so just bring whatever it is that you would like to drink and something to share as far as an appetizer, and it's a drop-in between 2 and 5, and we will get the address to you as we get closer to the day. So put that on your calendars for the 18th. Christmas Eve will be on Saturday this year, so we will have our usual 5 o'clock service as our Christmas Eve service, and then our Sunday morning service uh, will be on Sunday uh, here and uh, on Christmas Day. And afterwards on Christmas Day, we're going to have a quick little brunch. We're just going to have some kind of egg dish, some quiche or egg casserole, uh, some fruit, some coffee and pastries. So uh, if you'd like to stay after on Christmas Day for a little bite to eat before you head home, we'll be doing that on Christmas Day. Um, There are a couple of other announcements that are coming up that are a little bit further out that I call your attention to on our announcement sheet. Are there other announcements from the folks here that are not on our announcement sheet? All right then. Our service this morning is going to begin with the first two verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 56 in your hymnal. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. If you will join me in singing in the Gather Hymnal, number 330, Prepare the Way of the Lord as we light the Advent wreath.
will continue now with the Gloria, which during our Advent season is going to be the Magnificat, and we will say this together. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us say together the collect for today. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, May we rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is located at the bottom of page 3. Please read in unison. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Now our feet are standing within the gates of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is in unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel to praise the name of the Lord. For there are thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls, and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. The second lesson is from the book of Romans 13, 11 to 14. You know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as in the day not in, revealing and, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, About that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field. One will be taken, one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken, and one will be left. Keep away, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Whew, well, we got through our Thanksgiving holiday in pretty good shape. The decorations were nice, the food was plentiful and delicious, and it was so great to spend so much time with our friends and family. And to top it all off, the Cowboys won. Woohoo! So now, here we are, beginning our Advent, Christmas right behind upon us, those seasons, and it's time for me to start getting ready. So there's a lot of things on my to-do list, so uh, let's start with the first one, shopping and buying gifts. Yes, as we all know, this is Black Friday weekend, and Monday is Cyber Monday for the online buying, so time to get out there and start putting... uh, all of these uh, sales to good use. Got to see, let's see who I have to buy for this year. Come on, hurry up. So, okay, so let's see, I've got my spouse, that's Robin, and then my sister, and then her four kids, and her fiancé. And then on Robin's side of the family, let's see, there's her sister, our nephew, his wife, their three kids, and the nephew's wife's mom. Whew! Well, that's quite a lot I have to be shopping for, but luckily we have all of these great deals going on right now, and I hope I can find something that each person will enjoy and like and appreciate receiving. So that's the first thing on the list. And then the second thing, let me help Dottie here, short as she is. (laughs) Take that off. There we go. All right. She's going to help me with my list here. Yes, cleaning the house. That's the second thing on the list. As you know, before you can put the decorations up, you have to have all of the house clean so that the decorations don't get in the way of all the dirty stuff. And then, because it's the holiday season, you know, we've got a lot of friends coming and stopping by and family that may be spending the night, so i got to get the guest room ready. That reminds me, you ever notice how during the year... All the stuff that collects in the corners and the extra rooms and on the shelves. and So now I have to sift and sort through all that stuff and figure out where it's going to go, whether I'm going to donate it or keep it and where to put it, because I have to get all that out of the way for the people that are going to stay in the guest bedroom. Sometimes I feel like I've got too much stuff. I'm stuffed with stuff. And now I have to make room for more stuff. Whew, all right. Well, that's the second thing on the list. What comes up after cleaning the house? Ah, yes, now that the house is clean, we got to put up the decorations. So let's see. I've got two Christmas trees and their ornaments. i got to get those out. Then the wreath that goes on the front door, and then there's the mistletoe ball that my mom gave me years ago that she used to put up in her house, and when she stopped, she gave it to me. So that's got to go up in memory of her. And then there's my Santa Claus collection. Oh, and the creche. And then the lights outside, I don't know about you, but my neighbors are already busy putting up their lights. It looks sometimes like a carnival when you drive around. So I've got to get my lights up. 
Uh, let's see, what else is out there? Okay, I've got, oh, and the little knicky knack things, and then the, the changing of the towels that have the Christmas trees and the Christmassy stuff, so that each room has a little taste of something Christmassy. So I've got to get all of that stuff out and get that going. So that's next on the list. Okay, after I finish with the decorations, what comes after that? Holiday baking and cooking. Yes, got to get those cookies going. I don't know about you, but holiday baking is one of the things that gets sent out to the friends and family. So let's see, this year it'll be chocolate chip cookies, peanut butter cookies, sugar cookies, gingerbread cookies. Then there's the fudge, the brownies, the Yule log, oh, and the fruitcake, and then the pies. So apple pie and pumpkin pie and pecan pie. So there's a lot of baking that needs to be done. And then I've got to figure out when we get to Christmas, what's the Christmas meal going to be? Are we going to do turkey again? Maybe ham? Maybe a roast? And then the sides that go with that, something fancy, maybe like, I don't know, asparagus and hollandaise sauce or, I don't know, au gratin potatoes. So all of that needs to be bought and, and, and i got to get busy with the baking because i got to get the baking done before the next, I think, thing that comes up, which is... Christmas cards. Ah, yes, the annual tradition of Christmas cards. Whew, I sure am feeling kind of burdened right about now with all this stuff that I've got to do. I don't know about you, but I look at my list sometimes of all my friends and family, and I, I keep in touch with quite a few of them on Facebook, so they already kind of know throughout the year what's been happening. But then there's those other folks that you only keep in touch with at Christmas when you send the Christmas card. So they don't have any idea what happened this past year, so i got to do a recap on that. But I don't want to repeat it for the people that have already been keeping up on Facebook. <sighs> and then you have to personalize it, because you have to make sure that each person doesn't feel like you just signed your name and stuck a card in the mail. You want to put a little note in there about what you remember about them. And so that's going to take some time. So, okay, got to get busy with those. Maybe I can do some cards while the cookies are in the oven. Next, wrapping and mailing all of the gifts. Yes, indeed. Now I've got all the gifts. I've got to get them wrapped. I got to get them boxed up and ready for posting. And I got to do the same thing with the Christmas cards. They have to be addressed and take those. And all of those goodies that I just finished baking, I got to get those into tins and, and box those up and send those off to people. Whew, how many of you have been to the post office during Christmas season? It's a zoo, isn't it? The lines are so long and they take so long because everybody is sending stuff. Go to Tombstone. Go to Tombstone. <laughs> There's always a long line that you have to wait, and then I've got to get all my stuff weighed and the postage and everything. I'm probably going to have to allow at least an hour in my schedule to be able to do all that. So now I've got to figure out when I'm going to put that in. And it's got to be about two weeks in advance because the Postal Service hasn't um, been doing real well lately. So I have to make sure I've got plenty of time for it to get to where it's going so that it arrives before Christmas. <coughs> Okay, after I get all of that mailed, what's on the next on the list there? Holiday parties. Ah, yes. Those things, those invitations that come every year to your neighbor parties, your community parties, your work parties. Uh, and then there's the events that happen during the year for concerts and other charitable types of events so you can support the local charities because they do such good work for our, our local people that are in need. So I've got to make sure I keep my evenings free for all these parties. Man, I am really starting to feel burdened here by all of this stuff. What's the la last couple of things here? Okay, so holiday traveling. Ah, yes, got to make the travel plans. Am I going to be going... <laughs> am I going to be going uh, by car or by plane, both the jet fuel and gasoline are expensive as all get out right now, so either way is going to be an expensive trip. And then there's always the airport parking fees and the rental cars and the hotel and the eating out. This is really starting to get expensive with all of that travel. What's the last thing? Family traditions and obligations. Ah, yes. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yes, 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 you know how it goes. You have to go and spend time with those family members that maybe you don't enjoy quite so much. 
because maybe they're a little too loud, maybe they drink too much, maybe they're that person that's impossible to please, doesn't matter what you fix or what you give them as a gift, they're never happy. Or you've got some of those other people in the family that you don't really care for because they tell inappropriate jokes or they talk about politics all the time and you get weary of it. But we're all family, so we have to go. It's tradition, you know, to go and hang out together at least once a year. Got to do that. And then there's the other traditions that we can't ever seem to change. You know, the way you have to do things, like... You have to always go to this particular person's house on this particular day at this particular time to open the gifts in this particular order. Heaven help us if we can't change that. No, no, no. It's tradition. You have to do it. Wow. Well, I've got quite the list of things that I've got to get done during this season, and i got to say, I'm feeling kind of weighed down. And... <laughs> Not at all joyful about all of this. Holy cow. Huh? Bah humbug. Bah humbug. Yeah, almost, right? In our Advent devotional on page 11 for the first uh, uh, Advent, our author, Cynthia Kittridge, puts this burdensome feeling in this way. It's a vague unease that becomes an obsession followed by exhaustion and ending up in self-judgment. I have buried myself under blankets of self-imposed burdens. I am overwhelmed with seasonal obligations. I have covered myself with Christmas-tide concerns. I need to wake up to what I'm doing with my time and energy and resources. I need to wake up from the hypnosis of what the contemporary culture tells me is necessary or important. I need to wake up from the soul-stifling slumbers of the same old things year after year. Our Advent season this year is about simplicity of seeking to find ways that allow us to simplify what we do that does not bring us joy and peace and comfort. We are called to examine in Advent and Christmas season, and by extension to the other seasons of our lives, what we do and why we do it. And maybe consider if we're ready to make a change, to simplify things. Our lessons today reflect some of this idea of self-examination and seeking to find things that are simpler. In our first reading from Isaiah, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And I would add, make that lightness of the Lord, as in unburdened and free. Let us walk in the lightness of the Lord, letting go of some of these things that are maybe burdensome to us. Now my opening illustration illustrates the load that I've put on myself with my, what I believe is my necessary list of things to do during this season. And there are certainly areas in there where I could simplify. Starting with shopping. Instead of buying things, I could maybe offer experiences to those people that are on my list. Let's go to the movies. Let's have a game night. Let's go for a hike. Let's go to a museum and make it an invitation instead of having to buy a thing. Of course, you have to do the cleaning of the house bit, but when it gets to the decorations, maybe I don't have to put all those things out every year. Maybe I can make, you know, this is the even year and that's the odd year and divvy those things up so it's not so much. When it comes to the holiday baking, just bake less. Pick a couple of things, not everything. Christmas cards. These days, maybe I could get uh, a nice photo of Robin and I and, and put it on a Christmas postcard and send that instead of having to do the whole Christmas card thing. The mailing and the wrapping of gifts. Well, if I don't buy as many gifts, I don't have as many to mail. So they're simplifying that right there. 
And when it comes to the holiday parties and the other events that I am sort of feeling obligated to attend, I can limit those things and pick and choose one or two and not feel like I have to do all of them. Holiday travel, maybe because it's so expensive this year, maybe this year I don't travel during the Christmas season and I travel when maybe it's less expensive. Save some pennies that way and a little bit of heartache too. You never know with cancellations and, and delays and so forth and getting there on time. And when it comes to the family traditions and obligations, well, some of those you just have to put up with because they're family. But maybe there's a way to even limit that, how much I go to and how long I stay for some of those events. So there's always places there where you can simplify. In Psalm 122, verse 7, peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. Think about the things that bring you peace and quiet in your home, in our church. What are the things that we can do to help increase that peace and quiet? In the epistle to the Romans, now is the moment for you to wake up from sleep. And as I just demonstrated, I'm trying to wake up to and be aware of, to be conscious of all the stuff that I'm doing and how much of it is really necessary. How much of it can I simplify so that I find more peace and quiet? And in our gospel from Matthew, we, we heard, keep awake and be ready, for we do not know when Christ will come to us. If I focus too much and all of this that I've put on myself as something that I have to do, and it occupies my thoughts and my feelings and my energy, then all that stuff is distracting me from the real purpose of the season, the reason for the season, Christ. And we celebrate Christ who came 2,000 years ago and who is coming again in his own good time, whenever he feels like it, he's going to appear to us each individually in a different way. And we don't know what that's going to look like or how that's going to be. But if I'm too busy, if I'm caught up in the busyness of the season, I might miss Christ's presence in my life. Christ coming into my awareness. Not being able to appreciate that visit from his holy presence. I want to simplify how I enter into this Advent and Christmas season. And I especially want to think about ways of being full of that peace, that quiet, that love, joy, hope, comfort, all of those things that we especially concentrate on in this season that come from God, that come from Christ, that come from the Holy Spirit. And for those good things to enter in, I've got to let some things go and make room. Won't you join me in thinking about ways that we all, each one of us, can simplify things to bring about that peace, that quietness within our walls? Our Advent uh, booklets also say, in other words, to let go in order to wake up and embrace and enter into the beauty of the moment that we are in. Amen. And as you are able, and we'll continue with the Nicene Creed found on page five. Saying together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the world, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. 
He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the life of the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Continuing at the top of page six, show us your mercy, O Lord, and, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us from the Holy Spirit. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Napon, Se, Ko, Kai. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Matthews in Chandler. We acknowledge and pay respect to the first peoples of this land, especially the Apache and Pasca Yaqui, who call this area of Arizona their home. Rejoicing in the relate fellowship of all your saints, we, we commend these to pray for ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. And also, also with you. Peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Please stand as you are able, and we begin our communion part of our service at the top of page 8. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because of your goodness and the fullness of your love revealed in your abundant creation, in the sending of your Son, and in the imparting of your Holy Spirit, our hearts are moved to thankful praise. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
I love that song. It's one of my favorites. So at this time in our service, we like to see if anyone has a birthday this week they're celebrating. Anybody? Birthdays? Anniversaries this week coming up. Request for special healing prayers. Mike and Betty. My daughter, Robin. For Robin, shoulder surgery. Yeah, that's hard to say. Yeah. Shoulder surgery. Um, for Bill Carswell and Ann, Ann is up in Phoenix now um, having some tests. There's a either a bone spur or a piece of bone that is pressing on her spinal cord that's causing excruciating pain. And so she's going to be having uh, this week some kind of procedure to try and relieve that. So please keep Ann and Bill Carswell in prayer. Others? All right, let us say together the healing prayer on the little green card in your pews. You'll raise your right hand in blessing and say with me, O God, the strength of the weak and the comfort of the suffering, mercifully accept our prayers and grant to your servants the help of your power, that sickness may be turned into health and sorrow into joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. How about travelers? Anybody heading out of town? Yes? Okay. On Tuesday. All right. So we'll pray for her. Anybody else traveling? No? All right. Let us raise our hands in prayer for uh, Ginger. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journeys in, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then not on the car, uh, gratitude, something you're grateful for, answer to a prayer. Nancy. I'm back. You're back, back. safely. Yes. <laughs> Everything went very well. Thank you. Thank so you, you had a good trip and good travel. Grateful for that, absolutely. Others, gratitudes, answers to prayers. Sorry to make it here, but... Yeah, well, that's okay, but two out of three had good travel. Okay. The third one's okay? Yeah, I just had to work. Oh, he had to work. Bummer, man. On Thanksgiving, that sucks. <laughs> Anybody else have a gratitude or answer to a prayer they'd like to mention this morning? All right, well, thank you for your little contributions here. Uh, again, this goes in the rector's discretionary, and then I use it to pay out uh, in our community for those that need a little help with utilities or food or shelter. So thank you for your donations to that. Uh, please stand as you are able and let us uh, go to our post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the simplicity, stillness, and serenity of this Advent season bring you peace and fulfillment to your hearts and homes. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. The people of St. Stephen's, what does God call us to do? We are called to love and serve. Let us go forth in love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our closing song is number 65 in the hymnal 1982, Prepare the Way, O Zion.